This is London Calling. Good evening all, I hope you're well. It's been quite a while since I've done a cigar video, let alone a non-Cuban cigar. <clears throat> well, tonight's the night. I hope you're all having a good weekend, Sunday evening. And I picked this cigar up um, when I went to the Pipe Club of London meet on Tuesday, last Tuesday. And this is one of the protective uh, cases that they give you when you buy a cigar or two. And the cigar we have is the current Cigar Aficionado number one cigar. I was walking around the humidor at Dunhill's 1A and chatting to Robert and he suggested that I try it. It's, it's, he said it's the number one. To be honest, I haven't bought the uh, Cigar Aficionado magazine for quite a while now um, as I've been really into my pipe smoking and um, I just didn't really feel the need. Um, I enjoy reading the magazine but uh, it was I was feeling less and less um, sort of connected to it so I just didn't feel the urge and I'd much rather buy a pipe smoking magazine um, I'm really sad to hear that um, it looks like that um, uh, pipes and tobacco magazine is going is closing down from what I hear from what I understand which is really sad anyhow um, so this is the cigar it's uh, Perez Carrillo or Carrillo um, this is the E.P. Carrillo Encore Majestic, uh, which is, um, I guess it's a, a Robusto size, slightly bigger than a Robusto. Um, it, you got a 96, I don't really give much credence to their ratings to be honest, I don't follow them really, um, and I haven't really generally found them to be um, matching to my particular palette um, anyway this is a five and three eighths um, long five inches and three eighths of an inch long and it's a 52 ring gauge and it's a, a gentle box press nice looking band and the picture here is is i think one of his daughters i think one of the things that he does on his cigars is he, he commemorates people who are involved, part of his family. And this one is Lisette, apparently her name is. Anyway, that's a, a photo there on the side, a representation at least. The aroma on the wrapper is a bit chocolatey, a little bit of pepper. The foot is a bit fruitier and spicier and quite a, a sharp peppery like a snuff kind of hit. If the aroma is anything to go by it's probably going to be quite a strong cigar. Um, and I've got to be honest straight off I haven't really been enjoying the non-Cubans of late. You know, I've reduced my uh, cigar intake quite a bit recently, um, and I hardly ever have non-Cubans. Um, the few that I have are the sun-grown, under, the Undercrown sun-grown, the Drew Estate Undercrown sun-grown, the Oliva Serie V uh, Bellicoso, and the Melanios. That's probably the three that I will have. Occasionally, I'll have a Fuente as well, Arturo Fuente. Um, but uh, generally speaking, it's uh, Cubans all the way. Um, so, and this one, I just um, when I was there, I thought, why not? I haven't done a Cuban video for, uh, I haven't done a, a cigar video for quite some time now, and why not do one which is of the moment, um, having been named the number one? So I thought, give it a go. And you might be pleasantly surprised. I think I won't be pleasantly surprised. I think I'm going to find this to be quite a savoury, peppery affair, uh, but we shall see. Draws wide open, very fruity dry draw. It's fruit and cedar, a little bit woodsy, a little bit earthy. 
a little bit chocolatey. Let's light it up. I must be honest, with non-Cuban cigars, I will allow myself to light them with a jet lighter. And Cubans I tend to light with a soft flame, but I thought I'd give this one every chance. And soft flame is supposed to be less harsh, less brutal when it comes to lighting it. You put a flame to it, a jet flame, it's you know really high heat and you're really burning the end rather than toasting it. Just a gentle, without touching the cigar head, just let it gently ignite. Keep rotating the cigar. And then draw. It's a nice looking cigar, it's attractive. It's got a nice sort of mid-brown uh, wrapper, like a cocoa colored wrapper. It reminds me a little bit of the Milanios, um, that kind of thing where it's a little bit mottled. You've got some deeper brown areas, lighter brown areas. It just gives a really nice and marbly effect. Nice band, nice luxurious looking band. All right, I shall come back to you soon. About halfway into the first third, very nice white ash, beautiful draw, perfect draw. When I took the dry draw, it was quite open, a little bit too open, but um, once it's lit and warmed up, tobacco has expanded a bit. Spot on, absolutely spot on draw. Flavours started off quite sweet. quite tobacco-y. There's a little bit of a, uh, a licorice-y kind of top note just before you get to the finish. And the finish is, is tobacco-y. <coughs> There's a little touch of, of tangy richness there. Like a sweetness, slight burnt sugar sweetness, but really very slight, almost not there. Not getting much of a, a pepper coming through at the moment. Um, I don't retrohale much, certainly not on non Cubans, but. Just doing it to test it. A little bit peppery, a little bit of a white pepper blast on the retroheld, but I'm only retroheading lightly. Really nice thick smoke. We'll set it down for a bit and uh, we'll come back to you soon. So far so good. While the uh, cigar is stewing a little bit, I'll just give you a little bit of a, a tour around the, the desk. I haven't done that for a while. Um, the mug. This was sent to me by Pipes and Spirits, by Art. He took some screen grabs from some of my videos and sent me four mugs, each depicting a different image, and even one for one of my nighttime drives, which is very cool, and I enjoy drinking out of these. And they're also a good size, so you get a good coffee out of it. The ashtray is uh, 304 Woodworks. I don't think he's uh, working anymore in this kind of field. Um, he was on Instagram and on YouTube f for a while, but he went off YouTube and just was on Instagram for a while. <coughs> um, really nice ashtrays. There's two different uh, woods there, which he's bonded together with a nice sort of copper shavings, which he's inlaid. And it's really very nice. The, the stand is magnetic, the cigar stand. And you can replace it with a knocker, with a cork knocker for pipe uh, usage, for usage with a pipe. 
Um, that uh, take a pipeful jar I got from a, a mystery uh, yabo. Uh, somebody sent me this in the post, and I had no idea who it was from. No, nothing on the uh, there was an address on the box, but no name. <coughs> um, but um, eventually, that person contacted me and told me that uh, he had bought it, but didn't want me to publicise it, so I haven't. Which was very, very nice of him. This little um, pipe uh, bowl. Uh, you see, it's got a knocker in there, the cork knocker. This I won at the Pipe Club of London meetup a couple of months ago. Um, and the rest is basically, obviously, my pipe stand, some pipes, and some just general paraphernalia. That little uh, tobacco taste of London, uh, that's a small little humidor, um, which I was given by um, 1A Dunhill by Robert. Um, and it's just basically a, a very small humidor, you can put uh, three or four cigars in there. And it's, a, it's a nice little, little travel humidor. I was trying to hold. I was trying to hold the ash for the uh, for this next installment, but it dropped just as I placed it down. So quite a flaky light ash, but um, it held on for the first third. So first third in, and um, it's been. I mean, construction-wise, it's been fantastic. Flavors have been quite nice as well. I think this will probably um, improve a lot with some time. Um, I don't find that non-Cubans improve. A huge amount or at least not compared to Cuban cigars but they do improve somewhat and um, I think this with a bit of time will mellow um, I think these were released um, and around 20 um, I think they were officially released in, in March of 2018 if I'm not mistaken or, or around that kind of time um, but they were uh, uh, circulating perhaps under a different guise earlier than that um, but I have no idea how old this particular cigar is I've only bought a single One thing I don't care for is the aroma. The, the room note is really not that pleasant. It's quite a... I um, uh, can't really describe it, but it's just not particularly pleasant. That's one thing you can't beat is the aroma from Cuban cigars. The aroma is just fantastic. <coughs> You've got a real sweet spice, uh, sweet spice kind of aroma. Now, in terms of flavours, um, this one is... Um, there is a, like a high note to it. I'm, t I'm trying to get my head around it and to trying to describe it. Um, I was kind of thinking going towards licorice before, but it's definitely becoming more peppy now. It's definitely richer and fuller, more peppery as we get into the second third. It's not unpleasant. Um, there is a certain sort of earthy dustiness to the flavour um, the best part of this is as you draw to me where as you draw in you get a nice little sweet tanginess um, but that fades quite quickly you get that earthiness coming through quite an earthy cigar this And the finish does give you a little bit more of that sweetness, but it's very mild. And there's a little bit of heat on the back of your mouth, in, in your throat, the back of your tongue. Not very oily, and not very oily on the lips or on the tongue. Uh, the wrapper itself um, is quite of a, a matte look to it. Perhaps it's a little bit of a pistachio type of flavour. Um, I actually am finding it quite hard to describe the flavours, but there is some sweetness there, there is some nuttiness, there is some licorice kind of element to it. Um, there is quite a bit of earth. And I'm now starting to get some pepper as well, as we get into the second third proper. I'm not sure if I'm getting a hint of some kind of berry on the retrohale. There is something. I, I, I'm, I'm really finding it hard to describe the flavours that I'm getting in this. Uh, maybe a bit orangey, possibly. Maybe orange. I 
All right. We'll come back as we get towards the final third. It's time to take off the first band. Flavor is pretty consistent. For me, if I wanted to describe this so far, I would say this is somewhere between a light Connecticut and a Maduro, somewhere in between that. So it's not full on sweet, um, spicy Maduro, um, and it's not weak, milded, um, and just a bright kind of Connecticut style. It's somewhere in between. So you get a bit of that sweetness, a richness, a bit of the mildness, um, tobacco flavors, um, and there's some sweetness in there bit of spice, a um, bit of earthiness, quite earthy and leathery. Um, and that's how I would describe it. It's, I don't get any flavours jumping out at me. I, I much prefer a sweeter, richer, tangier cigar, um, which is why I end up smoking mostly Cubans. Um, and the ones that I do, the non-Cubans that I do smoke, tend to have that uh, pro profile, which is why I smoke them, which is the and the other crown uh, sun grown the Olivas and that kind of thing, the Melanios, they have that sweetness to, uh, and some sweet richness there. Um, <clears throat> and this one is, is much more of an earthy, leathery kind of affair, um, pretty much consistently throughout. There's some highlights here and there, but generally that's that's where this is at at the moment and has been pretty much all the way through. Approaching the final third, still really consistent in flavors, very much the same, quiet, leathery earthy <clears throat> a drop of sweetness it's really sort of gone in the background the sweetness now um it's really has quite a savory smoke um the the flavor that i'm getting is a little bit sort of tangy i'm gonna say orange slight orange flavor but it's really not orange really it's just reminiscent of it and it's somewhere in between orange and licorice for me um and uh it's it's really not my kind of cigar but I can uh, appreciate what it's, what it's trying to do. Unbelievable amounts of smoke. Makes it easy to blow rings. Very thick, viscous smoke. There is a little bit of a nutty flavour there, which is what kind of reminisced of uh, cashew. Um, but it's not enough, there's not enough of a caramelised sweetness there for me to call it uh, caramelised nuts, cashew nuts. Cashew nuts have a bit of a sweetness to them themselves. Um, but um, I'd say a savoury cashew nut with a bit of a, an orange, a hint of orange kind of zestiness. But don't buy the cigar because of the orange flavor. It's not really an orange flavor. It's just, uh, there's a, a, an element to this which I, I can't quite describe, but it's in my mind, it's something like orange flavor moving over to licorice. It's, that's the only way I can describe it. Still a little bit of a, a bite at the back of the tongue. Oh. Retrohale, I just retrohaled and um, really quite spicy, very peppery, very spicy um, and quite a coarse black pepper hit um, and quite sharp on the back of the tongue as well. Um, so yeah, this is a, is a savoury spicy cigar. And I say spicy, I don't mean chilli spicy, there was, I think it was a Don Pepin, um, Don Pepin uh, I had a blue band on it, I think, and that one I, I had to set down before the end because it was just too hot. It was a chilli heat, a really strong, full-on pepper, red sort of chilli pepper kind of strength and heat there. But this one is different, this is more of a, a black pepper, um, condiment pepper, but it's strong, it is quite punchy, especially on the retro hill. As always, I'm really very impressed with the construction of non-Cubans. They beat the Cuban cigars hands down when it comes to construction, when it comes to presentation, when it comes to the bands. Everything else besides for the flavor, they beat Cubans hands down. Even the boxes are nicer, you know. Um, but, um, and you know, the, the box presses are, are really done very, very well. You don't really get many box presses in, 
in um, in Cubans cigars. I'm not even sure that you do get any. Yeah, there are. I noticed. I think the H. Chapman Aniados. I think the Aniados range. There's a couple of those are box pressed. Starting to get a little bit of almond paste now, and that's usually indicating that I'm I'm heading towards the end of the enjoyable part of the cigar. Um, when I get almond paste, that's usually when it's starting to move towards turning to ashiness. You can't do that on a Cuban cigar. Very rarely can you take it off in one hit. Take the band off. There's actually quite a bit of the cigar left. But it is really quite full on now, really earthy. Somewhere, some, there's, again I'm finding it hard to describe, but it's a bit of almond paste, a bit of, of a licorice kind of flavour. Um, and, uh, and that pepper is there, and there's a little bit of a zing on the tongue, almost an anaesthetic on the tongue. It's almost making your tongue, tongue a little bit numb. Alright, time to uh, wrap things up here. Um, all in all, it's been a pleasant cigar, but really savoury, um, but not um, too peppery. Um, as I got through the cigar, I thought it was really going to ramp up and become extremely peppery, but it, it laid back as it got through this, the, as I got into the final third, um, and it settled down, um, and it became quite harmonised and harmonious and. Um, but still, that definitely a savoury cigar all the way through. So let's break it down. Um, construction, visual construction, very very nice. A, a really nice, attractive looking cigar. A nice soft box press, not too sharp. Um, very nice sort of size. The Vitolo is good. It's a 52 ring gauge, five and three eighths of an inch long. Uh, so a non-Cuban, an American kind of robusta size. Um, nice coloured wrapper, a mid-brown wrapper with a, a kind of a mottled sort of look to it, a little bit of like a marbleized kind of brown and darker and lighter browns, very nice. Um, so visual construction is, is really very good. Um, uh, I'd go for as far as a 9 out of 10 on visual construction. Uh, mechanical construction, um, for me this one really gets as close as you can to a 10, it's perfect. Um, the, the, the burn was good, I didn't touch it up a single time. Um, you know, I wouldn't say it's razor sharp, but it's you know pretty consistent throughout. It, it never got beyond that kind of level of waviness um, to the burn line. The ash is a little bit flaky. Um, if I had to criticise, that would be the only thing I would say is that the ash is flaky. But it's a white ash, which indicates a good quality soil. Um, the draw, perfect, absolutely perfect. I mentioned that earlier on. Um, as I said, when I first drew the, the dry draw, it was really wide open. I thought it was going to be a little bit too open, but as soon as I lit it, warmed up, expanded, and just closed up it just enough to give you a perfect draw. They really got it down to an art, a fine art, um, the non-Cubans. Very, very impressive. Um, I actually didn't uh, talk about the actual makeup of the cigar. I'll just give you a quick rundown. Um, so I'm just reading off uh, Cigar Aficionado's website and there's a whole description which I'm not going to go through but I'm just going to talk about the actual going to read off which I haven't really read yet but um, I think it's only fair to give you a description of what's in there. So the filler tobaccos deep inside are from Nicaragua is three primary growing, growing so it's a Nicaraguan Puro um, regions from Esteli, Condega and Elapa and all of it comes together in the Majestic, a robusta of immaculately detailed flavour that ranges from oak and tea to caramel sweetness with tangy citrus pops of candied orange peel. It's elegant, refined and nuanced first puff to last, but it's also the culmination of a long career in tobacco and the result of a man who is never afraid to follow his instincts. I'm pleased to see some of those descriptions, um, but I think it, to my palate anyway, it's, it takes it a little bit far. Um, the tea, yes, I can get that. Um, that was probably the type of 
I was finding it difficult to 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 describe that sort of licoricey, um, nutty kind of flavour. Oak definitely it was woodsy, earthy, um, and tangy citrus pops of candied orange peel. I, I, if you remember, I did sort of get some kind of hint of orange, but I wouldn't say candied orange peel. There isn't enough sweetness in there to call this candied orange peel to my palate. I think the sweetness really needs to be increased somehow. Um, but um, it's elegant to find the nuance from first puff to last. I didn't experience that. I didn't find it to be particularly elegant. It is somewhat refined um, because, as I, say, as I say, it wasn't too much in your face. It wasn't too peppery. It wasn't too strong and it was kind of quite controlled all the way through and consistent all the way through so it was somewhat refined um, nuanced from puff to last first puff, puff to last I personally didn't get that experience I didn't find it very nuanced I found it quite consistent and wouldn't go so far as to say linear but it was fairly straight all the way through with that flavour um, the only thing which went up and down was perhaps that pepperiness which um, was really mild at the beginning middle sort of third it came in a little bit more and then set back a little bit in the final third but other than that i found it to be quite consistent which is a good thing um, but if you're looking for evolution through the cigar i didn't see a huge amount of evolution anyway mechanical construction um, on this one i'm going to give it um a, i think a 10 i, I see no reason why not um, i'm not going to criticize it for the very slight um sort of deviations on there that's really nothing um, and I'd be ridiculously uh, critical if I was expecting a razor sharp line throughout so um, and the ash a bit flaky but again you know uh, a good quality um, method of growing is, is was visible in, in the quality of the ash so again uh, it's only a really minor thing and if maybe I'd drop off a quarter of a mark but I don't see the need so for me mechanical construction gets a 10 out of 10 flavors um, I've got to really be realistic and say within the genre of non-Cuban cigars I have to disregard my personal preferences um, so what this cigar sets out to do it does very well um, it's a um, it's a savory earthy uh, woodsy kind of smoke with hints of sweetness hints of fruit um, and perhaps some cashew and I suppose you could uh, call it tea if you like I, I didn't necessarily it didn't come to mind when I was smoking it but um, there are some flavors in there and if you want to call that nuanced I would say nuanced because it's really very very subtle um, so I would say subtle rather than nuanced um, and perhaps those flavors coming to the fore a little bit more would have really made it a much more enjoyable cigar from a flavor point of view um, so flavor wise um, for me this one based on my personal preferences um, I would give this a seven and a half because it does what it does and it does it pretty well um, even go to an eight possibly it just doesn't happen to be my particular preference so we'll go for an eight because it is very consistent um, it's somewhat refined to my palate um, and there are some interesting flavors in there just they could be a little bit more robust um, it never got too strong I really thought it was going to become extremely punchy and peppery and it didn't it, it, it's very controlled and i think that's a huge plus point for this cigar uh, a lot of non-cubans they just run away with that strength and you know a lot of people like that but i find that very hard to cope with such as in that don pepin cigar um so an eight out of ten for the flavors in terms of the strength and fullness um strength um it started off pretty mild um, and was fairly you definitely got fullness but in terms of strength um i would say it was a mild to medium up until the final third where it gets to medium possibly medium plus but really nothing not full that's for sure not in, in terms of strength in terms of flavor in terms of fullness in the mouth um i would say it was a medium from the off and, and got towards a full towards the end overall mark um within the genre of non-cuban cigars i'm going to give this a nine out of ten i think it's actually um, better than I was kind of thinking as I was smoking it but when I'm going through this summary and I'm realizing that I've got to be realistic about uh, assessing it within the genre of non-cuban cigars it's a very good cigar it is actually a very good cigar would I say it's uh, a number one would it hit a number one on the list I don't know I, I don't know what the parameters are for cigar aficionado naming it as number one um, I personally think that there are better cigars in the lineup of the top 25 in their list um, but that's just my my taste 
Um, and I, I, I do think that they can't keep naming the same cigars as the top cigars. So they have to have some kind of rotation, bring in some new cigars. Um, and um, I can understand that. Um, so 8 out of 10 all round, even a 9. You know, it's a very, very good cigar. Um, and I would uh, recommend it if you enjoy non-Cuban cigars. If you're a Cuban cigar um, aficionado, if that's what you prefer, then um, I wouldn't, uh, you know, sort of run to your tobacconist to get this cigar. Um, but if you do enjoy non-Cubans, then give it a go. It's, it's a nice, pleasant cigar. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll hopefully try and get some more cigar uh, videos um, on my channel. I haven't done them for a while. Um, and if that's something that you do enjoy, then please drop me a message down below if you, if you do want to see some more um, cigar videos, and I'll try and uh, do that. Thanks very much. Catch you on the next one. This is London Calling.